Thank you so much, Daniel. I appreciate the warm welcome and uh, nice to see everybody online. It's a great turnout. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about um, amazing interactive visualizations with one of my favorite libraries, Boca. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Boca is a Japanese word, comes from photography, and it talks about this intentional out of focus blurring to draw your eye towards something important. And I'm going to click over to this slide that's on Flickr from this photographer named James Drury. Great example. He's taken a photo of this dog running through the forest. The whole forest is there, but it's blurred and out of context. So your eye is drawn immediately to the dog. And if you look closely at the frame, you can see the exact plane where things are in focus and out of focus. So that's kind of what it means and where it comes from. And this library applies some of these same ideas to visualization, right? Uh, specifically for Python, it's designed to be easy to use, intentionally look good, like good looking graphics bring you credibility. And it's built to be interactive, like we're working with bigger data sets now, and interactivity is another way of exploring and learning things. Um, so it, I'll dig into this. You can see the words on the slide, but I think you'll like it as a library. It's very expressive, easy to use in lots of contexts. The documentation is great. Um, there's a lot of use cases for it that you can see. And why don't we just go ahead and jump in and, and take a look at a few, right? So here is our first Boca graph. And there's some hidden cells. This is all in the GitHub repo. Uh, but you can see in this one liner, you get a very pretty graph of some simple uh, uh, bar chart of fruits. And you're saying, well, Chris, this is beautiful, but it's not really interactive. But it is. There's this selection tool. And I can pan around and play with the graph. And I can drag and zoom in on certain parts of the graph. And I can zoom out, right? I can reset if I don't like it. And I can also save it. So that's what you get for a one liner out of Boca right away. Kind of neat. Let's look at something else. Um, interactivity can take lots of forms. And I'll zoom in on this chart. This is just uh, an illustration of how easy it is to use Boca on the back end of Pandas. So when you're looking at data, you can plug this library in. You can see the GitHub link right here and get uh, some beautiful visualizations with very easy and useful interactions. The first thing I'll point out is that there's two charts here. The top chart is actually a zoom in of this purple area on the bottom chart. This bottom chart is called a range tool and I can drag this little slider around and focus in on all or part of the, the area of interest. I can look at half a year, I can look at a whole year, I can look at different years. There's other forms of interactivity too. As I mouse over, you can see these little hover tool tips in the front uh, that have the actual X, Y values. And, uh, and you can turn even those off and on if you wanna look at one or more things. So this is super powerful tool sets that are built off of your data. So these are all data driven graphics, right? Another example that's interesting is this model of interactivity, similar graph of Google stock price back before uh, the age of the internet. And uh, this is showing how you can add some simple graphical illustrations to highlight in an interactive way where points on the graph have a similar height. And so kind of sexy and cool, and this has different applications. Again, uh, there's lots of things under the hood here, and I'm just trying to give you a taste of stuff that you can dive in and, and get a flavor for. But these are very easy to use, and again, usable in lots of environments. Right now we're doing it uh, in, uh, um, uh, in Jupyter Notebooks, obviously. Now just a little heads up, we're going to see some JavaScript. I'm sure everybody here will be fine, but I like to give the little trigger warning. Uh, here is a way that you can interact with a, a Jupyter Notebook and actually get data out of the notebook, not just a picture of the graphic, not just some an image like you can do in many libraries, but the actual data. Again, so there's hidden cells that generated this selection of random points. The interactivity we have right here is this little lasso tool that's gonna to let me select this arbitrary range of points. And as I select it, you can see that the array of points is mirrored both in the graph to the right, showing the red points, as well as this table. In this other graph here, I can add little hovers, giving me things like pop-up information relevant to that point of data, even links to HTML and GIFs and all kinds of stuff. You can put videos in here, kind of neat. Uh, this table of data is the actual data points that we have selected. It happens to be sortable and also saveable so that we can save it off and, oops, excuse me, uh, and then open it back up 
and actually use this somewhere. And so I love this little snippet uh, that uh, uh, someone in, on the library um, created uh, because you know, it's very rare to have these interactive models where you can get kind of things out of the uh, of um, uh, out of the Jupyter Notebook or something based on an arbitrary selection. So very cool. All right, now we're going to go take a look at two other things that are interesting. Um, these are examples that were created by the Boca maintainers. And the first one we're going to look at is, of course, this Fourier one, which is not working. So we'll look at the spectrogram. The spectrogram example is showing us how uh, Using um, Pi Audio, the microphone is picking up my actual voice and reflecting that right here in this graph here, showing the power of my voice, as well as the signal strength and the distribution of strength over a frequency. So this is a good example how with live streaming data, you can run uh, things through your laptop with very low power and actually get very interactive real-time graphs. So you can apply this to other problems, of course, but this example in particular was pretty interesting. I do want to go and click over and take a look at uh, one other item. Let's just see if my animated thing is running. Ah, good, it's running in this tab. I must have had the wrong tab. So this is an example of how Boca can be used to animate uh, on an equation basis, right? So here we have the four harmonic circles centered in the same uh, location. And it's just showing you the height of a particular point on the orbit. And this is a great way to illustrate how certain sine waves come in and out of phase. And that's super cool. Uh, this is a precursor to the other visualization that I think is a little bit more interesting, where you have those same four harmonic circles. But now those harmonic circles are orbiting around each other. And so this is a great example of how how uh, something like square wave. And of course, you know, uh, there's other more complex examples. In fact, if you go to this second link here, there's a website with some um, toggles that you can play with where you can change the frequency and things like that of each of those circles and construct different waves. So uh, when you have a few minutes, I encourage you to go check that out because it's actually super cool. Again, both of these graphs running in real time right now and showing how you can animate and do complex illustrations uh, using Python. All right, so that's the Boca uh, server, a couple of static videos. This is a happy birthday from Python that was in the back of uh, uh, back in December, but that is the end of the talk. So hopefully you've seen a couple of things that are interesting uh, around how to visualize cool stuff with Python. Uh, do check out the Boca library. It's one of my favorites.